glowed and they did glow. He hung the stars in the sky. He tells the sun when to shine. And if you think he can't bring you out of the grave you're in, honey, you're wrong. All he's got to do is call your name. in vain. I believe in the words preached. I believe it's for a reason. I believe tonight with all my heart that he's standing outside your tomb and he's calling somebody's name. I believe tonight hey man if you'll just come up to maybe you can't walk. Maybe you can't talk. Maybe you can't just come, amen. That was the message last night. Just come. Come out of the darkness. Come to Jesus, amen. He'll do the rest. So from being a dead man in a deep, dark grave, to sitting at the table eating with the Lord in just a few days' time. About 10, I'd say something, I don't know, just a few days. <laughs> I want you to tell just how fast it happened to me. I was addicted to them drugs. I'm gonna tell I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about this. I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about it. Let's tell you a little bit about, about how bad it is. In that grave, I didn't have nothing. In that grave, I've lost everything. I didn't have any friends. Them people that showed up that night at my house, I don't know why they did. Other than God told me to. It sure wasn't because I'd been good to them. I despised them, rejected them, asked them to leave me alone. Some of them I had cursed. I had dodged and avoided the people of God, the children of God. I wanted nothing to do with the things of God. I was living my life. I was staying high. I thought I was doing all right. But I didn't have nothing. But the devil had the blinders on me. Honey, under God, I want you to know if our gospel will be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. Because the God of this world has blinded the minds of them who believe not. I want you to know here tonight, hey man, the devil had me blinded. I'd have told you I saved, I'd made professions. Oh, but I was as lost as a lost man could be. Help him, God. I didn't have one thing in this world. Spent everything I ever had on dope. Nearly lost my wife. It's by the good graces of God and just her being a precious, wonderful woman that stuck with me through the thick and the thin. I thank God for that. That little girl of mine, the one that we still had, she was five years old when I got saved. I hadn't been a daddy to her. I'm telling you tonight, we, we got us a home there not long after we got married. I fooled around. There's some people crazy enough to let me borrow some money. I fooled around and financed a trailer. Lost it in two months flat. You can't pay bills strung out on dope. That's right. Lost that trailer. My family didn't have a place to live. I was out running around, running wild. My wife had to go back over there and stay with her mama because we'd lost her place. I didn't have a lick of sense. Credit hurt. Didn't have a vehicle to drive. Walking, freezing cold, I was walking. I ain't proud of it. I'll just tell the truth here tonight. I'd break into places and, and not steal a thing to buy dope with. I'd go to the cupboard. I'd get a jar of peanut butter and I'd go to eating because I hadn't eaten a week or two. I'd get me clothes out of their, out of their closets because I was about froze to death. Didn't have nowhere to stay. Sleeping. Homeless. Going here to the higher. Anybody that opened the door and let me in. I had an addiction that's bigger than I was. But it wasn't bigger than God. I just didn't know it at the time. I 
was in the tomb, lost everything I had. Paul, but I'm telling you, for the sake of time, I'll not go into the depths of the whole story. But about two weeks after we buried that little girl, I tell you, God had been working in my life. I was under conviction. He was dealing with me. My grandpa had spoke to me the day after he died, after she died, and he said, Son, trust in the Lord. Then four words got in my mind. I couldn't get away from them. I went to begging. I so wicked I didn't have a Bible in my house. I found one that the church had given me years ago, up there in the shed in the building. When I got it out, it had mold on the cover. I remember taking it down there and wiping that mold off that old Bible. Honey, it may have been moldy on the outside, but it didn't hurt what was on the inside. I got to reading in that old Bible. God had a hold to me. I'm going to throw this in there. A few days prior to this, if losing my little girl wasn't enough, I was so stupid. I went back to the dope. I had a water dope about that big around, and I've done it every bit at one time. And for three days, I thought I was going to die. I'm telling you the honest of God's truth. Hey, God was just trying to get a hold of me. I was, I was so under conviction. I was so scared. I was so afraid. But I got to reading in that Bible, and God found me. I remember over there in the book of Corinthians, His word, God found me. But chapter 6 and verse number 9, I was reading and it said, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? But the next three words shook my world. It said, Be ye not deceived. Honey, end of God, I want you to know that got a hold of me. I began to read down through there. There's some of them words I didn't understand, but there's some of them I did. I said, oh God, that's me. I realized that day I was a sinner. For a few years, I'd known I'd go to hell. Oh, listen, that day I saw Jesus like I'd never seen Him before. The Bible says that it's the goodness of God that leadeth thee to repentance. Honey, that day I, I seen what a wicked sinner I was, but I seen what a good God He was. Praise God. Hallelujah. I read on down. And it said such word, some of you, but you've been washed, yeah. you've been made nigh. Oh God, I realized that I could come to Jesus. I fell down that day in my living room floor in a puddle of tears and snot. I called out to God. I said, Lord Jesus, I said, I can't do this on my own. I began to tell him. Ever sin I committed, I was calling them out. I said, Lord, forgive me and come into my heart and save me. And honey, I'm telling you, from that second right there, I've never been the same. I spent them out. Eleven and a half years ago. <laughs> October of 2009. <laughs> and I can tell you right here tonight, every bit of the glory to God, because I couldn't do it on my own. Eleven and a half years. There's not been one drug. There's not been one drop of alcohol in my body for 11 and a half years. He set me down at his table. He began to feed me so good. And I wasn't going to leave this table for nothing that this world's got to offer. Not for the money the world's got. Not for the sex they've got. Not for the drugs, the alcohol, the pain. Honey, I'm telling you, they ain't got nothing that'll even compare to what you'll find sitting at the Lord's table. From the tomb to the table. Oh, ain't it good to sit down 
and feast with the Lord. Yes. I've told you Elijah's story. I've told you mine. Last night we heard a little bit at the end of the service about a little old fella named Mephibosheth. <laughs> he was down there in Lodi Bar. Wasn't no pasture. He was a cripple. He might as well have been in the tomb. He 